All right, so now we'll do some integration techniques that'll let us tackle some more complicated antiderivatives. So recall the chain rule for derivatives says if I had a function that was a composition of another one, right? So if I had f of g of x, right? Its derivative, f prime of x, would be df dx, or sorry, df dg times dg dx, right? Or f prime g times g prime x, okay? So the uh, rule we're gonna work on today, I'll put that down here so you can see it, um, is basically the chain rule in reverse, right? So if we get lucky, we might find an integral that looks like this. An integral like integral of df dg times dg dx dx, right? If we get an integral that looks like this, well, then that's exactly the chain rule sitting inside that integral. So we know that the antiderivative would be f of g of x plus a constant, right? So an example of that would be something like integral of 2x times e to the x squared dx, right? And it might not be obvious that, that this is exactly the chain rule in reverse, but when you get an integral like this, you might say, okay, that looks like the derivative of that inside function, okay? And then e is obviously gonna be the same as e. So to recognize that this is in fact the chain rule, right, sitting inside there, we have to do what's called a u substitution, okay? So we make a u substitution where we say, okay, Let's write down u as a function of x, and we're gonna use something that's sitting inside this integral. And oftentimes what you wanna do is you wanna grab the term that's kind of sitting in the most complicated thing, right? So this looks like a composition of exponential and x squared. So let's let u be that inside function, x squared. And then you say, okay, what's the derivative of u with respect to x? Well, du dx is 2x, right? I'm saying u is a function of x, and that function is x squared, its derivative is 2x. And then what happens to this integral is we say, okay, that integral 2x e to the x squared dx, that's equal to du dx sitting out in front, right? This is the 2x here. Let's make this blue. Times e to the u, right? Because e to the x squared is the same as e to the u. So let's make that in red, and then dx, okay? And so here we have what looks like df dg, dg dx, sitting right here, right? Where this is du dx, and this could be d some function du, right? So to see this now, what we like to do is we say, okay, we got a dx here and a dx there, so let's just cancel those out, and we're left with e to the u du, and now this is just an integral with respect to u, so we can take that, right? Integral with respect to u of exponential is just exponential. And then to finish this off, right, we were talking about x was the original integral, so we plug in u of x equals x squared. Okay, so then our integral is equal to e to the x squared plus c. Okay, and so uh, sometimes people will also write this as instead of u equals x squared and du dx is 2x, the next step they do is they like move the dx over to the right. So they say du is equal to 2x dx. And then what they do, here, let me write this down here instead, right? So another way that people teach this is they say, okay, if I have an integral 2x e to the x squared dx, we make the substitution u equals x squared and then we say du dx is 2x, right? We just take that derivative and then we move this dx to the other side, which looks weird, but is I guess technically legal. And then they say, okay, here is, um, in blue, we're gonna replace the 2x dx with a du and we're gonna replace 
the u and the x squared. Okay, so then they say, okay, well then that's equal to e to the u du, and then you kind of finish off this process, right? So this still gives you e to the u plus c, and then you plug it in, e to the x squared plus c. Okay, there's a couple ways to do this, and all of them rest on kind of assuming that you have something chain rule-like in the integral, which then you can kind of pull out apart. Um, but when you're actually doing this, you're not really thinking about the chain rule anymore. You're making a substitution, changing the variable that you're integrating with respect to, so now you have this integral of something you know how to take the antiderivative of, and then just that variable sitting right there. Okay, so you're kind of changing the variables, taking the antiderivative, and then plugging in the original variables. Okay, so let's do another example. And hopefully the more times you do this, kind of the, the more intuitive it'll become. So let's do this example here. Integral of e to the 2t divided by one plus e to the two t squared dt, right? So this is like a super complicated function that definitely can't just say, oh, I know the antiderivative of exponential, so this is easy. We have to make some sort of substitution here. We have to make some sort of choice in order to decide how the heck we're going to rewrite this as a function of just a variable and then have that function be something we can take the antiderivative of, okay? And so whenever you see these, I like to say, okay, where's like the most innermost function, right? I could pick 2t, that might be good. Or I could pick the thing that's sitting in the denominator inside this square, and that might be a better choice, right? So let's try. And oftentimes with these u substitution problems, you try a u, you see if it works. If it makes the problem solvable, then that's great. Otherwise, you have to go back to the beginning and try something else. So let's try u is the bottom here, 1 plus e to the 2t but not the whole square thing, just one plus e to the two t. Okay, then my du dt, if I take the derivative of this function u of t with respect to time, one goes away, e to the two t becomes two e to the two t, right? The derivative of e to some power is by the chain rule just two times e to the two t here. Okay, and then let's see, okay, what, what does that change in our integral? Our integral becomes e to the 2t over 1 plus e to the 2t squared dt. If I just plug in this u, I get 1 over u squared times e to the 2t dt. All right, and then we're almost there, right? We have du dt almost here, right? We're just off by a constant. So then what we do is we multiply by 1, and by multiplying by 1, I mean multiply by this number, that's sitting out in front of the thing to make it look exactly like the derivative, and then also divide by it, right? So we're going to say, okay, integral of one over u squared times one half times two e to the two t dt, right? So the one half and the two cancel, but I can rewrite two e to the two t as du dt now, okay? So then this gives me, uh, let's pull the one half all the way out in front, one over u squared, this two e to the two t, is right here, right? We're gonna replace that with du dt, dt. All right, and then now we have du dt, dt, so these dt's will cancel. We'll have to be one half, one over u squared, du. And now this is something we can take the antiderivative of, right? It's just a power of u, right? This is just uh, one half integral of u to the minus two, du. So we apply the power rule, that gives us one half u to the minus two plus one over minus two plus one, plus our integration constant. Okay, so this is just power rule. So that gives us minus a half u to the minus one plus c, or let's say minus one over two u plus constant. And we plug in our u of t, right, which was one plus e to the two t. And then our integral is equal to minus one over, let's do it like this, minus one over two, one plus e to the two t, plus our constant, okay? So we took this complicated looking thing, we made a lucky guess, right? We could have tried a bunch of things and this might not have worked, uh, but I've had a lot of experience with doing this, so I, I kind of can eyeball these. Um, but it'll take time and experience to be able to kind of pick out the first correct use substitution on the first try. Uh, so don't feel bad if 
if you try a bunch of use, none of them work, right? It takes, takes a lot of practice. So I picked this thing that's kind of sitting on the bottom and kind of inside this square. I use that as my u sub, take its derivative, rewrite the integral with my u. Okay, see, I have something that looks like the derivative of u, but not quite. So then I multiplied by a half and times, I multiplied by one, and by multiplying by one, I mean I multiplied by half and by two. Then I could see, okay, there was the derivative sitting right there. So that turned into the derivative, and now this is just an integral with respect to u, which is an easy integral, you know, easy in quotes. Uh, but something what I know the antiderivative rules to apply here, right? Then I just apply the power rule to that integral, and then I resubstitute in this function of t to get my integral. Okay? So this takes a lot of practice, and it's not always going to work, right? So this is kind of a key point, is that not every integral can be solved with u substitutions. So if you keep trying and trying and trying and it's still not working, then, then it probably means that it can't be solved with a u sub. Sub integrals can't be solved by hand at all, actually. So we're learning lots of different techniques to solve them, but at the end of the day, not every integral can be solved with u substitution. But a case where u substitution will always work is in a case where you're just kind of removing consonants. Always works when you're trying to remove constants. And what do I mean by remove constants? Uh, we're moving constants. I mean something where it looks like you would have the integral if only there wasn't a constant sitting there. Okay, so let me grab this next example. All right, so let's say we had the integral of 6.48 e to the negative 0.09 t dt. Okay, and what I mean by getting rid of constants, I'm not talking about this constant that's sitting out in front here, because we could just apply constant product rule, right? Pull the 6.48 out in front. Right, I could just say, okay, well that's just 6.48 times the integral of this. I'm talking about constants that are kind of sitting inside my functions that I'm trying to integrate. All right, so here this constant negative 0.09 is sitting inside that exponent. So I want to use a u substitution to kind of get rid of this because I know how to take the, uh, the antiderivative of e. I don't know how to take it when there's something kind of sitting inside that exponent with my variable. Okay, so let's try the u substitution where we just grab that constant. So we say let's let u of t be negative 0.09t. Okay, the derivative of that is just negative 0.09. So what does this integral become? 6.48 times the integral of e to the u dt, right? So I can't integrate because u and dt are not the same variable. u and t are not the same variable. I have to get this du dt in there somehow. So I'll do this trick again. I'll multiply by negative 0.09 and also divide by it, right? So this gives me 6.48 divided by negative 0.09 times negative 0.09 e to the u dt. Now du dt is sitting right there in my integral, okay? And then I have to kind of factor this guy into the other constant. So this gives 72, sorry, negative 72. I did not do that in my head. I, I have this on another piece of paper. Um, and then here we have du dt e to the u dt, right? And now my dt's cancel and I get a nice integral minus 72, integral of e to the u du, which I know how to do, right? Antiderivative of e to the u is just e to the u. So I get minus 72 e to the u plus my constant, right? And then I plug in u of t equals negative 0.09 t. So the final answer is minus 72 e to the negative 0.09 t plus c. Okay, so whenever there's constants sitting in there inside my functions, a u substitution will always work to kind of eliminate those and make this a nice easy integral to solve. Okay, let's do one more example and then uh, this video is getting long, so we'll, we'll stop with one more example. All right, let's say we had the integral of minus 8 minus 3 cosine of 2 pi t minus 5 
dt. Okay, so right away I can say, okay, well, I can do the integral of 8. I could do the integral of cosine, but I can't do it with this stuff sitting inside my cosine. So here it makes sense to make a u substitution, right? Well, let's separate this out first. Let's say, okay, well, that's minus 8 dt minus 3 integral of cosine 2 pi t minus 5 dt. Okay, so whenever you have something simple and something kind of complicated, just split them up. We don't need to use a u substitution for this integral. We will need one on this second one, right? So let's say on the second one, um, let's just solve this one first. That gives us minus 8t plus constant, right? And then minus 3 cosine of 2 pi t minus 5 dt, right? And now we'll use a u substitution to solve this integral on the right. Okay. Um, let me scroll up a bit. Okay, so let's try u just being the stuff sitting inside the cosine. So let's let u be 2 pi t minus 5. Okay, then du dt, right? This is just a linear function with slope 2 pi, so the slope or the derivative is just 2 pi. All right, so then what does this problem become? We don't need to change this, we can leave that alone, right? It's already integrated, so we get minus 8t plus c minus 3 cosine of u dt, right? We can't integrate this yet because u is our variable and t is our variable that we're integrating with respect to, right? We need to plug in this u, this uh, du dt into here somehow so that we can get rid of the dt's and only be integrating with respect to u. So we'll do the same game, right? This is a constant, so let's multiply by it and divide by it. So we get minus 8t plus c minus 3 over 2 pi integral of cosine of u times 2 pi dt. Now we have the derivative of u sitting in there, so we can plug that in. Let's leave all this other stuff alone. Integral of cosine of u times du dt dt. Now this becomes an integral with respect to u plus c minus 3 over 2 pi cosine of u du. Now I can just apply the antiderivative of cosine and recall that sine has derivative of cosine, so the antiderivative of cosine is positive sine. So we get minus 8t plus c minus 3 over 2 pi sine of u. And, and then we also have another constant of integration. And whenever we have two constants of integration, we can just combine them into one because they're completely arbitrary. They don't matter if we have two separate ones or just one single one. So let's call that like C1. And then we'll just say, oh, let's combine C1 and C2 to be some other arbitrary constant. So minus 8t minus 3 over 2 pi sine of u plus a constant. And we're almost done, right? But we have time and u. So we need to plug in our u, right? Which was 2 pi t minus 5. Okay, so then our integral is minus 8t minus 3 over 2 pi sine of 2 pi t minus 5 plus c. Okay, and that's our final answer there. Okay, so u substitution is nice when it works. It can be tricky to figure out what the correct substitution might be, like in a problem like this. In problems where you're just trying to remove constants, maybe the substitution is a little more easy to see. And in these cases, it will always work, but it might not always work. Not every integral can be solved with u subs. We'll learn another in uh, integration technique in the next video. And then sometimes these things just can't be solved by hand at all. And that's why I have to turn to our numerical techniques and whatnot. Okay, so we'll stop the video here.